gracious Heavenly Father, I just ask that you would bless this ministry and bless those who are listening. I ask that you would take and filter out all of the foolishness and the ignorance, but seal to our hearts that which is truth. I'm so grateful for the opportunity that you've given us to study and fellowship over your word. I pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. We've been studying together in the Epistle to the Romans verse by verse, and we are solidly in chapter 12. There's something I want to say up front here about this entire study. Rather than give a a review of everything that we've seen in the past 11 chapters, which I've, I've pretty much done that already before. I'd just like to give you somewhat of an overview or something as a reminder. Uh, several facts that we need to keep in mind as we continue to go forward. We have seen 11 chapters of doctrine and we live in an age in which doctrine is a bad word the word in the Greek is teaching doctrine nothing dare replace it if I was a new Christian and I didn't know much about my position in Christ or all the blessings that I've received in Christ or or much of anything at all really and I just opened up my Bible and I just sort of pointed to some verse at random that told me to do something or to not do something and I set about going about doing that I would be simply going about that in the flesh I would be walking according to the flesh, I would be walking according to law, believing that Christ Jesus, who, whom I, I had come to know as my Savior, just simply expected that out of me, simply because uh, my life needed to go into in, in a different direction and it's just simply looked at as instructions on how to live the Christian life I've pointed out before my firm belief that this book is not a book of instructions on how to live the Christian life but is primarily a, a revelation of the person and the work of Jesus Christ Doctrine is important, and nothing dare replace it. And I find it amazing, astounding, how that God has so constructed these verses, these chapters and verses, this epistle, as he has every other book in, in the Bible, to present us 11 chapters of amazing doctrine pertaining to our life, in Christ what all that God has done for us the tremendous amount of blessings that he's given us that he's bestowed upon us just to name a few that we've been made the righteousness of God in Christ that we stand before him without spot and so I'd like to to get your attention on the fact I'd like to direct your attention toward the all-important, irreplaceable fact that doctrine has to precede, just as the text has shown us, just as this study has shown us, doctrine has to precede, must precede service. Uh, our faith is built upon all that has gone before. There was a reason why we had 11 chapters, and that's a lot, of precious doctrine whereby 
we would become partakers of the divine nature through these precious promises. Now, just to use a simple illustration, I want you to look at this chart that I'm going to put on the screen. I've divided this into two categories, physical and spiritual, and I've titled it Positive Reinforcement. If we look at the physical aspect of our lives, we can see that in the physical realm, Dad loves me, he cares, provides, and protects me, and he does that unconditionally. And so I relate to him that way, and the truth of that is life-changing. It actually governs my behavior. I come to realize that I don't work to gain acceptance, which is law. Now, I don't think that there's a single one of you out there who would write to me and tell me that this is how parents ought to raise their children, that they ought to love them, they ought to love their kids whenever they're good, and not love them when they're bad. I don't think any one of you would write to me suggesting that. And this is kind of how we look at, at our lives in the physical realm. My question to you is why do we feel like that that has changed when we come to the spiritual realm of all of this? We're under grace, not law. We had 11 chapters of doctrinal truth, and my logical service or worship is based on all that God has done for me in Christ. The truth of that is life-changing. I relate to God a in accordance with all of that doctrinal truth, and as a result, it governs my behavior. Jesus said, sanctify them in truth, thy word is truth, in his, in his, in his prayer to the Father. Sanctify them in truth, thy word is truth. So we come to chapter 12, and now, as I've pointed out, I've counted 40 uh, admonitions, instructions, exhortations, commandments, imperatives. Uh, it's about two per verse just in this chapter alone. Something that we've never seen before. And this followed by the beginning verses of the chapter, which is to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. And I've tried to point out that that is not telling you that you have to give give up that you're to give up something or that you're to it, it is not about law but grace it follows on the heels of all of that doctrine that we've seen in the previous 11 chapters based upon all that God has done for us which is a lot we are then to present our bodies unto God as a living sacrifice, which basically is telling us that we are to live according to all that we've seen that is true of us. That's what it means to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service, or the word is worship. That is our logical, the word is logical. That's our logical worship. It's only logical. It's only logical that a child, a small child, would, would respond to his parents in accordance with those, the, the love that, that those parents have for that child. If, if it's all about God, folks, the Lord does not take his children out to the woodshed, okay? God is not a God that tells us to do something, and, and if we don't do it, now we're in trouble. The amazing thing about what we're looking at, what we've come to see in, throughout this study here in Romans up to this point, what I find completely amazing is the grace that God has shown, shown us and how that He expects us, our response now to be in accordance with all of that grace.
And so as we go into looking at all of these various commandments, according to the grace having, having been given to, uh, to us, and we've all received that same grace, we all have different offices, different functions, different activities, different we function in different ways within the body. Not one more one member of the body is 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 more important than the other. We're all members of the same body, which is Christ. There is a particular way that the body is to function. These are not laws, in the sense that we, uh, of the of the old covenant that we're looking at. We're not under law, but grace. Unless we die to the law, we cannot live unto God. And what is even more amazing is, is as we go through and we look at each one of these 40 that I've, at least 40 that I've counted, and we look at each one of these, what we discover is something even more amazing. And that's the purpose of this video, and that's what I hope to be able to point out. In looking at the original text of, of verse 7, it, it states, or service in the service, or teaching in the teaching. Now the word service there is the word for table waiter. You know, if you've ever been out to eat in a restaurant and the waiter comes up and asks you for your order and, and brings your food and makes sure that you got plenty of napkins and, you know, all the condiments and, you know, asks you if everything is, you know, is fine and is, if there's anything else he can bring you. I mean, this, this is the word. There are, uh, there's the aspect of service within the body where we serve others. We are literally a table servant, and and it, we were just told not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. Which is, I remind you that that's that's quite interesting that the Holy Spirit would say that, choose to to place that instruction there, right up front, given all that that we've been blessed with in Christ, the the previous eleven chapters, all the enormous amount of of doctrine that pertains to grace and and where we stand in our relationship with God through Christ, where that He has nothing against us, that He loves us with an everlasting love, that He will never leave us nor forsake us. It's no wonder that He would say, don't think more highly of yourselves than you ought to. And He goes into the subject of serving, which is serving others, a table waiter. And then he goes into teaching, or teaching in the teaching, and that's articulated. The word is doctrine. And what I want to try to get across to you is the point. It's it's this is a very important point, and I hope I, I hope I do a good job of explaining this. It's all in accordance. All of this that, that we're going to be looking at is in accordance with doctrine. I mean, there are a lot of teachers out there that don't care about doctrine. So are they being obedient to the Word in verse 7 by just teaching whatever they're teaching? If it's not according to doctrine, I guess, and I'm not doing, I know I'm not doing a very good job of explaining this, but unless it's built upon doctrine, unless it's in accordance with doctrine, unless it is built upon the factor, our service is built upon the factor of all that we've seen that's gone before us, then our teaching is not in the teaching, our, it's doctrine, in the doctrine. The, the, the text is literally telling us to make sure that we teach doctrine, to make sure that we serve in the way that we're supposed to serve, which is in which sees all of the ele previous 11 chapters and all the doctrine that we've received, which sees that as the underlying foundation for 
all of our activity, all of our different functions and gifts within the body. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. And then we come to verse 8. And I'm again, I'm reading from the original text. The word is exhorting. It's, it's from the word paraclete, the comforter. When Jesus said that I will, I will go away and I will send you the comforter, the Holy Spirit, it's the same word. Uh, here in the text is it's para, cal, cal, para, parakaleo, all right? The word literally means comfort, comfort. So if that's our function, if that's our gift, if that's, if that's our activity that God gives us the grace to be involved in, it's the, the text says exhorting in the exhortation. It's the comfort. It's a particular thing. It's a particular comfort. It's not talking about, you know, you know, going walking. It's really not talking about walking up to a believer who's, you know, has been thrown off his horse and, you know, he's broken his leg and you're, and you're, you're going to sit there and you're going to give him comfort until first aid arrives. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about the spiritual aspect of our lives in Christ and that based upon the doctrine and the teaching that we've seen in the previous 11 chapters. We exhort, we comfort one another in accordance with, in relationship to, all that we've seen that's gone before. Or giving, the text goes on to say, in generosity, and that word generosity is the word liberal, if that is our gift, our spiritual gift, and it's, and, and I remind you, all of these are by grace. If that's our, if that's our activity, if that's our service that God has called us to give, we're to give liberally. The word literally means liberally, or leading with diligence, showing mercy with cheerfulness. Now, in future videos, I'm gonna. I'm going to actually spend some time going through all 40 of these commandments and 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 spending a little little time talking about what the words mean in the original text but for now I just want you to understand that we have to we have to if 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 we are serious folks about all of this if if we have gone beyond that mentality of just picking up the Bible and just reading it and doing it, which is kind of where most Christians are at today, if we are really longing and, and as as Christians are, searching, hungry for the truth, if that is your desire to know Christ as, as Paul said that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed unto the image of his death were that we recognize who we are in Christ and how that God dependence begins when self dependence ends that all of this is by grace and that it is only through grace that we are able to, to properly function and proper, properly serve and properly teach and properly exhort. I, I hope that you're getting the point that I'm trying to, to get across here in this one particular video. Let me say this again. Everything that we're seeing in the, in the rest of all of this chapter, of chapter 12, this enormous amount of instruction. What we come to see is we come to see that, that all of this is, is very particular. It's not made up. It's not something that's just the invention of our imagination. It, it is all based upon what we have been told, what we have been shown, all of the instructions that we've been given concerning how we are to present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God. It's an amazing chapter, folks. It really is. And, and, and I just want to say that 
on a personal note that I really truly do appreciate all of you who have continued to study with us here through this epistle, this marvelous epistle. I appreciate, I read all of your comments on, on YouTube. I try to answer all your emails. I know we don't have a large following on these videos, but that is, that's not my concern. My concern and my blessing is that it, it is helping people better understand their position in Christ. Look, I love you all. I truly do. Until next time, thanks for watching.